Hey, this is Michael from Oka Software. I'd like to give a quick overview about the latest new features included in Buto Volumetric Lighting and Fog, patch 3.2, just released yesterday. Buto Volumetric Lighting and Fog is an all-in volumetric lighting and fog solution for Unity URP. It's available on the Unity Asset Store, and I'll include a link in the description below. Before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe um, to this video and to my channel to help support my work and the work that I do. Okay, so to get started, I'd like to cover the three major new features that are included in Buto Volumetric Lighting and Fog Patch 3.2. These features are built-in volumetric noise generation, improved fog density masks, as well as a simple color mode support. I'm going to walk through each one of these features in order to highlight the new capabilities that were released with this patch. The first thing that I'll start with is with the built-in volumetric noise generation feature. Um, previously in Buto, in order to change the, um, the volume noise source, you would have to completely swap out the volume noise with a different noise texture that you would author on your own or that would be included in Buto. Um, I included about 30 different volume noise textures in Buto. Uh, now, going forward, you can easily customize your volume noise sources from the inspector window, uh, which you can see here on the right hand side. <clears throat> so, um, I've included a variety of different volume noise input sources. So, you can have no volume noise included in your scene, or you can continue to provide a texture as you would have done so far. I'll show an example of that volume noise texture. Here's just one example of a texture being used. However, what's really cool is this new feature, which allows you to choose from any different type of volume noise source that I've included uh, in Buta. So you can choose from Perlin, Worley, Perlin Worley, Billow, and Curl Noise types. And each one of these types can be changed on the fly using these different sliders. This really gives you a lot of control about how you choose to make your noise look. You can have really sharp edged fog like this, or really gradual soft edged fog like that. You can also invert the noise texture. Um, if you do that on something like your whirly noise, you'll get more wispy shapes like this, as opposed to the more sort of spherical shapes that you'll get on the non-inverted version. In addition, we added this seed slider so the noise will always be fixed or the same for a given seed setting. Um, so you can just change that around and you'll see that at different seeds, it's completely randomized to a completely new noise look for that same noise type. Importantly, you also have a quality setting slider. So this lets you toggle between different levels or resolutions of the quality for the noise type. So I've included low, medium, high, and ultra settings that allow you a lot of variability in terms of how you want to approach the noise setting uh, in your game. Um, uh, I'll go into a little bit of detail about uh, the different settings. So frequency allows you to control the sort of density of the noise, the rate at which it tiles. Um, the octaves allows you to control how many sort of layers of noise are included in each channel and the lacunarity and gain settings allow you to control sort of the FBM shape of the noise uh, as well. So all of those are completely new settings. Uh, the uh, texture and noise type will continue to receive an RGBA texture that's sampled linearly, uh, basically where the R channel is uh, weighted uh, more strongly than the G channel, than the B channel, and so on. Okay. Uh, so that is the built-in volume noise generation. I'm really excited about releasing this. Uh, you can actually kind of move your camera into different local fog volumes that have different volume noise sources as well. I'll give an example of that, and you'll see that the noise will change on the fly. A really powerful capability, and you can see when I go in here and I change that noise again, you can see that it also still changes all on the fly. 
instantly changing the look of the fog as you move in or out of these different uh, noise regions. Okay, so the second topic that I'll cover is our improved fog density masks. A fog density mask allows you to describe an area in which the fog is either strengthened or weakened, or an area in which um, uh, in which only the fog is allowed to render in that area. So I'll give some examples and some demo of what that looks like. We'll start with uh, the fog density mask setting. So previously the blend mode option was limited to your Bluto fog volume. This has now been moved to each individual fog mask. And so you can include multiplicative um, as well as exclusive blend modes from each of the different fog masks in your scene. I'll start with the multiplicative option. So you can see here as I strengthen this, you can actually really see where this um, mask is located. And if you look here, you can see that that mask is indeed located there. Masks are all spherical in shape. Um, and if you move it around, it'll affect the, the, the fog in the areas that it moves into. So this gives you a lot of really powerful capabilities um, for making the fog kind of rise up out of the ground or strengthen or things like that. Um, you can also attenuate the uh, sort of rate at which we get to the maximum density multiplier using this fall off setting here. And you can also change the radius. So you can see that the fog is actually only being rendered in a certain area here. That's because of this exclusive and this exclusive um, fog rendering uh, sort of options, as well as this multiplicative uh, fog setting here. So this one's excluding fog from being rendered in here. You can see as we take this up, or if we disable it, then the fog will rend be rendered in this area again. And so the multiplicative option allows you to exclude fog from being rendered in a particular area. This is good for things like fog of war. The exclusive blend mode basically says that fog will only be allowed to render in the area that's described within the bounds of the exclusive setting. Um, attenuated according to the fall off function as well. And so when we disable this, we can see that now the other exclusive setting is taking the only sort of precedence here. And if we disable that one as well, now the fog can be rendered anywhere in the scene. This is a really powerful new feature that really allows you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want the fog to look in your scene, where the fog will appear um, and under what circumstances. Check this out. Let's bring this fall off setting down a little bit so it has a smoother edge and then bring this up. So you can see that we can create sort of floating fog volumes or fog areas using this tool. I'll disable that again and now we have fog throughout the entire scene. I'll disable instead of the component, just the entire uh, object. There we go. <clears throat> now the last new setting that I want to highlight is our simple color modes uh, option in our custom color settings. Historically, in your custom color settings, you only had access to a color ramp. However, now you also have access to these custom color settings that can interpolate between the different fog volumes in your scene. Let me turn off all three of these fog masks so that we don't have them kind of clouding the way that the scene looks. I'll also bring up the fog density a little bit and bring up the remapping so that we can see it very sharply. Okay, so in the custom color settings, we have, uh, we used to only have the color ramp option. However, we now also have access to the lit color, shadowed color, and emit color settings that enable you to easily interpolate between these colors during runtime in order to dynamically change the look of your fog. You also have access to this color influence slider that determines to what extent the uh, fog is affected by these different settings. You can see that you can easily customize the lit color as well as the shadowed color to get very particular looks in your scene as to how you want the fog to appear.
you can see that this shadow over here is completely blue. So let me tweak this over. Let's call it more of like a purple and maybe desaturate that a little bit um, while bringing the value down. Perfect. And then we'll take the lit color and we'll turn it more of like an orangey red color. Cool. So now you can see here when we zoom in, when we go into the specific shadowed regions, those shadowed regions are being rendered with this blue shadow color. And if we take this off, bring it back down to zero, you can see that that returns down to black. And if we take this slider of color influence and turn that all the way off, now it's being affected by the world color and um, spherical harmonics in your scene. So this setting gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want the fog to appear in your scene. Um, and it's something that you can dynamically adjust during runtime. Uh, you can also cause the fog to have an emission value to it, basically causing it to give off light in your scene. That can give these really cool, mysterious, spooky looks as well. Uh, so those are the three major features that I wanted to highlight for Buto Patch 3.2. Uh, you can purchase Buto on the Unity Asset Store for $10. Uh, as of the recording of this video, I'll include a link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'd really appreciate it again if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel to help support my work. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments below if there are any other new features that you'd like to see in the newer uh, releases for Buto. Thanks for watching.